So now we're going to discuss something called predicate transformers or predicate transformer semantics. And first I'm going to motivate why we need to talk about these predicate transformers. Uh, we have already looked at core logic and we know that core logic is a deductive system which basically looks like if x is true then y is true. So it's a set of inference rules which says oh if you can construct x then you can also construct y and so on. But what it does not encode is the strategy to construct these rules. So given a program and given a partial correctness condition as a whole triple, how do I derive that partial correctness condition? There's no strategy to build it. Although, you know, in our in the example that we've been discussing so far, we've been using what, what I've been calling pattern matching to build reductions in our examples. But we need a more kind of algorithmic representation of the same same meaning or same kind of set of semantics. And that's what predicate transformers are going to give us. So the predicate transformers are kind of the two types. One is weakest preconditions and the other is called strongest post conditions. And we're going to discuss each of them in turn. Today I'm going to introduce weakest preconditions. But what are what these are, are they are complete strategies. Unlike whole triples, whole logic, uh, uh, deductive uh, specification, where we were just basically saying, oh, if this holds, then that holds, if this holds, then that holds, etc. This is a strategy, this is an algorithm to build valid whole logic deductions. Now, you should be surprised when I say complete strategies because we've already said that whole logic is incomplete because of Godel's theorem or the theory of undecidability. So how do I say it's a complete strategy? Well, there's a rider to it, assuming that the loop invariants are provided by the programmer under this assumption, it's a complete strategy. So this is, you know, um, appealing to the relative completeness uh, theorem that we had stated, uh, basically saying that if some oracle is giving us these uh, P primes and Q primes of the consequence rule, which are basically uh, going to represent our loop invariants, then this, uh, then any possible rule can be uh, derived and these predicate transformers will give you an algorithm to derive those rules assuming an oracle in this case we are assuming the oracle is the programmer is giving us the loop invariance all right so 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 now i'm going to discuss what are weakest preconditions and in later modules we're going to also talk about strongest post conditions and they're actually uh, very closely related as we're going to see so these are these weakest preconditions and strongest post conditions are also called predicate transformer semantics. Why are they called so? Because these semantics basically transform statements into predicates. Uh, so for example, if there was, um, there was a whole triple that was required to be proven, uh, which is P, C, Q, where P is a predicate, Q is a, another predicate, but C is a program or a statement. And so we can, we, this, these predicate transformer semantics are going to convert this representation into some predicate formula, which phi, which I'm representing using phi, which involves P and Q and maybe some other stuff, right? And, and so we're going, to con we're going to have a strategy, a complete strategy that goes from here, which involves statements to here, which involves no statements and only predicates. And that's why they're called predicate transformer semantics. This kind of transformation of statements to predicates are also, is also being called symbolic execution. All right, so what are weakest preconditions? So I'm going to define the meaning of a weakest precondition. For a statement S and a post condition R, a weakest precondition is a predicate Q such that for any precondition P, such that when I say precondition, I mean if PSR holds, where PSR is a whole triple representing the partial correctness condition, then uh, that's equivalent to saying that P implies Q, where Q is the weakest precondition. So what am I saying here? I'm saying that recall from the consequence rule that if P implies Q and PSR holds, then this also means that QSR holds, right? Uh, this, is, this is just falling out from these two statements. If PSR holds and P implies Q, then, um, oh, that's not true. Sorry. Okay, so this is the whole triple, which is PSR, and that's equivalent to saying P implies Q. So in other words, Q is the loosest or the weakest possible precondition that can come here. Any other precondition that can come here must be stronger than Q, which is where Q is the weakest precondition. So in other words, if I was basically to say that, uh, you know, 
I was basically to write something like this, and I wanted to know what can come here. I want to ask what is the what is the predicate that can come here, which means what is the precondition. Um, I just use the same color. So what is the precondition that can come here? I can choose any predicate here, which is stronger than Q, and that would work. In fact, Q itself would also work here, and that's why it's called the weakest precondition because it is a precondition of R across S. Moreover, it is the weakest such precondition, which means if there was any other precondition, then that would necessarily be stronger than Q. So once again, Q is the loosest or the least restrictive or the weakest requirement needed to guarantee. That R holds after the execution of S. So, if Q holds at the beginning of S, then what uh, R would hold after S, and it's the weakest such requirement, the loosest or the least restrictive. I'm going to describe what I mean by loosest or weak, uh, weakest or least restrictive in more detail. For example, true is looser than false. True is basically saying everything is acceptable. False is saying nothing is acceptable. So, false is kind of if I was to uh, take all the set of points that satisfy true, it will be the entire universe. If I take all the points that satisfy false, it would be the empty set. So that's why I say because true has a bigger set, true represents a bigger set, which is the universe, than false. I say true is weaker or loser than false. X is greater than 15 is loser or weaker than X is greater than 20. The number of points that satisfy X is greater than 15 is more than the number of points, strictly more than the number of points that satisfy x is greater than 20. There are four, five extra points in x is greater than 15, which is, I mean, if, if my entire kind of space was restricted to the values of x, then x can be 16, 17, 18, 19, and, uh, and that would satisfy, and 20, and that would satisfy x is greater than 15, but not satisfy x is greater than 20. And so we say x is greater than 15 is looser or weaker than x is greater than 20. Similarly, you know, if I kind of have conjunctions, for example, x is greater than 15 and something else, maybe x, y equals 1, or maybe and x is, you could have here, and, and x is less than 35 or whatever. This, These are basically, um, oh, did I, I think I made a mistake. I should have said is tighter, all right? So it's tighter or stronger. x is greater than 15 and y is greater than 1 is tighter or stronger than x is greater than 15. So just like we use the adjectives loser and weaker, the opposites are tighter or stronger. So, so another way to look at these predicates is through the set uh, representation as of Venn diagrams. So if Q was a predicate that represented this outer oval shaped structure, then P is and P represents this inner shape structure, then we say Q is looser than P. And that's exactly like saying that P implies Q because any point that satisfies P also satisfies Q. And that's exactly what weaker or loser means. And when I say I want the weakest precondition that sat, you know, for uh, R across S, then I'm basically saying I want the largest set that's, pos that's going to satisfy, uh, that, that's going to make sure that after S is executed, then R holds. And, and so any other precondition would strictly would be would be contained within that largest set or the weakest precondition. Okay, the other interesting property of weakest preconditions is that a weakest precondition is unique. So that's the uniqueness of weakest precondition. If both Q and Q prime are weakest preconditions, then by definition Q S R holds. So I mean our weakest preconditions of S and R, statement S and predicate R, then obviously Q S R holds and Q prime S R holds. Moreover, because you know Q prime is the weakest precondition, if Q S R holds, then it must be true that Q implies Q prime. Similarly, if Q prime S R holds and Q is the weakest precondition, then it must be true that Q implies Q prime. And from both these things, we know that Q must be equal to Q prime. And so the weakest precondition is unique because after all, there can be only one weakest uh, predicate or one largest set. If there were two largest sets, then one must be greater or uh, must, one must be contained in the other, in which case one could not have been the weakest. All right. So now we're going to define some rules for weakest precondition, just like we defined rules for whole logic. And to define rules, I'm going to first define uh, this, uh, this con construct called WP, which stands for weakest precondition uh, for statement S 
and post condition R. So WPSR represents a predicate for statement S and post condition R. And we're going to have rules for these weakest precondition uh, computation. And this, these rules are going to form a complete strategy for identifying, uh, for proving uh, that certain whole triple holds or not, or for constructing a given whole triple. All right. So we're going to, the strategy is going to be again defined in an inductive way. So we're going to look at, you know, individual statements, then we're going to look at sequences of statements, and then we're going to look at if then else and finally loops. So what are individual statements? Well, one of the types of individual statements is the skip statement, which is basically no op, does nothing. And we basically, our first rule says that the weakest precondition of skip comma R is just R. And that's easy to see because skip is almost like nothing happened. So whatever, if you want to enforce R at the end of skip, then the weakest precondition for that would be the same R before. If you take anything stronger than R, that would also be a precondition, but that whatever stronger is, but that would be stronger than the weakest precondition. And so weakest precondition of skip comma R is R. Similarly, weakest precondition across the assignment statement X colon equals E is the assignment statement and R is the post condition is just R with X substituted by E. So you replace X by E in R and that's what basically gives me the weakest precondition of R across X colon equals E. And this is, you know, this is kind of uh, very uh, similar to how our whole uh, logic rule for the assignment looked like as well. Recall that the whole logic rule had a similar thing except it was written in a deductive form. Here we are writing it as a, in an algorithmic form. And and so, you know, if I want to know what is the weakest precondition, I've basically been able to eliminate the statement and bring it into a predicate form. And that's why it's called a predicate transformer. So let's look at this second rule with an example to understand it in more detail. So let's say my assignment statement was x colon equals x minus 5. And the post condition I'm interested in is x is greater than 10. So the weakest precondition by our second rule is that just substitute x minus 5 for x inside this r, which is x is greater than 10, and that just gives me x minus 5 is greater than 10. This is just substitution of r, which is x minus 5, uh, x is greater than 10, with, uh, with this uh, substitution map, which substitutes x with x minus 5. And that becomes x minus 5 is greater than 10, and that is, that's equivalent to saying x is greater than 15. Now, I want to kind of discuss a little bit more on why this is the weakest precondition. It is easy to see that it is the precondition because if x is greater than 15, then if I subtract 5 from it, then whatever is remaining is would be greater than 10. Why is it the weakest precondition? Well, uh, first of all, it's a precondition. x is greater than 15, x minus 5, x is greater than 10 holds, which means x is greater than 15 is a precondition. Anything stronger, for example, if I say x is greater than 20, x minus 5, x is greater than 10, that also holds. Recall that x is greater than 20 is stronger than x is greater than 15, or x is greater than 15 is weaker then x is greater than 20. And so this whole triple also holds. But a weaker, I won't be able to find anything weaker than x is greater than 15, which actually holds. Because if I say x is greater than 12, for example, then that is weaker than x is greater than 15. But then this whole triple does not hold. In other words, x is greater than 12 is not a precondition. And so, you know, there's, there's some examples to kind of um, show through examples that x is greater than 15 is indeed the weakest precondition and they cannot be anything weaker than this that is also serves as a precondition of x is greater than 10 across the statement x colon equals x minus 5.